Welcome. I'm glad you're visiting our website today. We'll do a little introduction of some of the key things happening in our program. My name is Stefan Gravenstein. I am the director of geriatrics and palliative medicine here at Brown Medicine. I'm Richard Bezdeen. I'm a geriatrician. I came to Brown in 2000 to rebuild geriatrics and also lead the Center for Gerontology and Healthcare Research in the School of Public Health. Hi, I'm Jim Rudolph. I'm a geriatrician and palliative care physician at the Providence VA. I'm Nadia Mujahid, MD. I'm the co-director of the Geriatric Fracture Program um, at Rhode Island Hospital. I'm Ayan Nanda. I'm Associate Professor of Medicine and Program Director for our Genetic Medicine Fellowship Program. We have a program that is not just here at the main hospital, Rhode Island Hospital, but it also stretches across the VA hospital and other partner programs. One of the things that we think about every day here in our Division of Geriatrics and Palliative Medicine is how we can make the lives better for our patients and how we can make it a better learning environment for all the people that we do research with. This is not an easy thing to tackle because we are typically trained to think in silos in what we know best. One of the really amazing things here at Brown is that we can access health service researchers who partner with us. And now we're working on building a living lab where we can work with social scientists, computer scientists, engineers to find new ways to improve quality of life for older adults. So when you come to visit us or when you talk to us, ask us about the living lab, ask us about that vision and see about what you can do both in research, in teaching, and in clinical care that'll make this an amazing place to be. One of the privileges I've had is working with Dr. Bestein, who we'll talk with next, and I get to build on a foundation that he's put in place. He'll get to tell you about that. With this also, I've had a chance to collaborate with James Rudolph, who is really instrumental in assembling better research education programs, both for our faculty and our fellows. Then you'll hear about our co-management programs, and then finally you'll hear about our fellowship. And now the questions. Dr. Besting, we'll start with you. You were one of the founders for the new geriatrics program. Tell us a little bit about the vision, the foundation, and how you got us to where we are. Thank you, Stefan. Brown is the third geriatrics program I started. I guess you might call me a Johnny Appleseed for geriatric medicine and palliative care. First at Harvard, then at UConn, and now finally the third time as a charm here at Brown. Our vision was both simple to say and uh, more complex to flesh out. It's for a fully operational academic geriatrics program and palliative medicine program within the Department of Medicine. Our uh, guiding principle, first and foremost, is excellence in clinical care of the most vulnerable older patients. In addition, a robust learner-centered teaching program for medical students, fellows, residents, and even junior faculty is essential, and I think we've done that. The third component of the geriatrics program is research, mostly clinical and health services relevant to the care of older patients. But no academic program is complete without a terrific fellowship. The fellowship program is our farm system for new faculty. We hope with us, sometimes at other places, we've got this track record demonstrating that our fellows do like to stay with us. And in fact, several of the people uh, you're hearing from on the website our former fellows in the program who've joined the faculty. So far, so good. And also, many of our fellows have gone on to take on faculty positions elsewhere. The ones who stay, of course, stay as faculty. The ones who go elsewhere have populated other geriatrics programs. Next, we'll talk to Dr. Rudolph. Dr. Rudolph, you have been central to the VA programs, and these are now integrating into our overall program. Tell us a little bit about the VA. The VA is the largest integrated health care system in the United States, representing 150 hospitals, 1,200 outpatient clinics, and 134 nursing homes. Uh, within that scope, we focus our, our work at the Providence VA. And at the Providence VA, we have the opportunity for clinical care 
within our primary care and our transitional care programs, which is hospital and home, and home-based primary care. The most exciting part about the VA, from my standpoint, is the center of innovation in long-term services and supports. Here we use the 25 years of an electronic medical record within the VA system to do health services research, that is, examining how the healthcare system delivers care to our most vulnerable veterans. That opportunity of large data combined with unique delivery programs is a really exciting venture for a fellow. Follow-up question for you. Exactly how do faculty and fellows and so forth access research? Here's the advantage of having a center of innovation, is that we are set up to incorporate fellows into some of our existing projects, and that really gives fellows a jump start so that they don't have to go through a lot of the uh, pr processes to get started in their research. There's a lot of upfront cost in doing research, and having that center built with projects ready to go really allows the, the fellow to hit the ground running. Dr. Moshe, tell me a, a little bit about the co-management programs. You were there from the beginning of this, and uh, since then they've expanded quite a while. Um, how did it start, and, and how do we get to where we are now? So thank you, Dr. Gravenstein, for this opportunity. Um, I was a fellow back in 2010 in the Division of Geriatric Medicine when our uh, then Division Director, Dr. Besdeen, called me in the office one day asking if I would like to do a co-management program. Um, as a graduated fellow in training, I started the first co-management program at Rhode Island Hospital with the division and the Department of Orthopedic Surgery. The success of that program within a year was so tremendous um, that within the next four years, we have added four additional co-management programs at Rhode Island and the Mariam Hospital. Um, they range from orthopedic elective surgery to orthopedic trauma surgery to trauma ICU, urological procedures, and then the colorectal program at the Mariam Hospital. Um, if anything, it's a unique feature of our fellowship because the fellows get to work with us day in, day out. And there's also programs that deal with oncology outpatient, and we have a nurse practitioner with uh, psychiatry co-management. Absolutely. So uh, there is a geriatric oncology clinic, which is run by one of our colleagues, Dr. Reza, with one of the oncologists, and they basically take care of newly diagnosed elderly patients with cancer diagnoses. And then one of our nurse practitioners does Jerry Psych, along with the psychiatrist at Rhode Island Hospital. Dr. Nanda, you have been leading our fellowship program now for quite a while. Tell us something about our fellows and the fellowship program and how this sets us apart. So we have a well-established, robust fellowship program which provides training in full spectrum of clinical care sites mentored by experienced faculty. Our goal is to produce leaders in geriatrics, in clinical care, teaching, and scholarship. Um, we have three tracks, uh, one year, two year, and a three year track. The fellows during the fellowship work collaboratively with the geriatric psychiatry and palliative care fellows, especially during our three hour educational session every week. We, we love to hire new faculty from our own fellowship program. We have a very struct, highly structured research program led by you, Stefan, and uh, along with Jim Rudolph and David Dosa. The fellows have plenty of opportunities to participate in research projects. Currently, we have uh, four nursing home projects on COVID-19, so fellows can participate in that. The, the opportunities are so vast that the fellows can even prepare a poster or submit a manuscript before the end of the first year. So where have our fellows gone since they finished here? Most of our fellows have gone into academic uh, career. Um, majority, I would say 80% of our fellows have gone into become a faculty in most of the universities uh, in, uh, across the United States. Thanks for looking at this. And don't forget to look at the other parts of our website so you can learn even more about what we have and the opportunities for you as a learner or as a fellow faculty member.